You used to love that underwear. Mm. Used oh. to. Hello peeps, and welcome back to the next episode of our challenge, Can You Beat It Takes Two Solo? If you haven't seen the first episode, I highly suggest you do so in the top right, but the rules are fairly simple. Only I can control both characters. I can control one at a time, but that is pretty slow, and I gotta keep you guys entertained, so I'm playing ambidextrously. This time, we're tackling the tree with the wasp queen and the flying squirrels. And with that, let's resume our marital disputes. From where we left off, we didn't actually complete the shed. Oops. We just have to ride these wires all around the place. If you jump on with May and Cody at the same time, you'll have a much easier time jumping over the obstacles. Jump from wire to wire and you'll reach this area where you need to press both switches around the same time to pass. The farther path is much longer, so send May down there first. Wait a couple seconds, then send Cody down his path, and you should be able to switch both of them close enough. Going through the fan, you have a much longer split path, but this time you can jump on at the same time. Keep in mind that while the first set of switches are to be switched simultaneously, the next set aren't, so watch for when Cody and May can hit their own buttons. After the rail grind, all it takes is one more ground pound to truly finish the shed. I forgot how to ground pound. Excuse me, but... How do you ground pound? It's been a while. Oh. Oh, come on. If I could ever figure it out. After a bit of brainstorming, May and Cody come up with a fabulous idea that turning them into dolls was Rose's doing, and that they needed to get her tears to turn them back into humans. And I thought they cared for her. The binoculars tells them the Rose is in the house and that they should get there next. Once we make it on the windowsill, the book reappears and gives us both rope. And now we can swing like Spider-Man. The only thing bad about the swinging controls is that to grab on, Cody uses the right bumper. Like seriously, first he dashes with the stick button, then he uses the farthest button on the controller to rope swing. I hope Cody's controls won't be too much of an issue later on. Farther up the tree, we find a door and get trapped by improper porch manners. We wake up in chains, imprisoned by... squirrels? Them and the wasp are at an all-out war for the tree, and seeing as we aren't on the wasp's side and we can't die, they recruit us in exchange for a way into the house. They give us our next powers almost instantly, a sap machine gun to stick to certain services and slow down enemies, and a matchstick sniper to ignite said sap and blow it up. The squirrels tell us to get to the wasp's queen, who is actually a robot piloted by a squirrel spy gone rogue, and make sure it no longer flies. But after being thrusted into the war zone, we learn the hard truth of the weapons. They each need to be controlled by two hands. At least May only needs to worry about the mouse, but once again, Cody's controller keyboard makes us click the two opposite trigger buttons to launch the sap. Gee, thanks Cody. After exploring the place and getting used to our weapons, we come to learn the niches of each weapon beyond what the squirrel demonstrated. Cody can sap up certain surfaces to weigh it down, and if he trails the sap along a wall, May can spread her fire much farther. May can use her sniper to shoot targets and lighten the load of Cody's sticky sap. Nothing much happens until we reach this area. Okay. Bye bye. No. Don't make me play it. <laughs> Where we actually follow the game's rules in fear of a bonus competition. Honestly, some of the puzzle sections are pretty straightforward and don't need anything else other than taking turns, sapping, and shooting, all until we break this wall. When we're thrown immediately into our first combat encounter, and with two people who aren't able to attack without leaving the other to die, these are definitely going to be the hardest parts of the tree. Luckily, the bugs are nice enough to give us a red warning diamond to tell us that the wasps are about to attack. Spray them down with Cody's sap until all the aggressive ones are mobilized. Luckily, you only need to hit them with a couple of blobs. The sap is really limiting. Then once all the buggers are stunned, explode them all with May. All she needs is a quick flick of her wrist to aim and shoot, so keep May behind Cody and only attack with her once the coast is clear. We're given another grind rail section, but just jump on at the same time and try to do everything in rhythm, and you can even get past the rope section in the middle of it, but you are not ready for what comes after. A huge arena, with the wasps flying from every direction. There isn't a clear back where May can hide behind Cody, so you've got to be extra precise with Cody's sap spray to immobilize every wasp before they can strike. The bad thing is that the wasps don't tell you which person they're attacking, so when you see the red diamond, assume it's attacking you and prioritize it. Then once every wasp is sufficiently sapped, blow them all up with May. After resuming opening the safe, we get presented to this bad bug, a shield wasp that just so happens to have a shield. Wow, what do you know? 
He charges at the same person three times, then changes his targets to make sure to focus on the right character to dodge. The only time he is vulnerable is after his third charge, but only for a second because he locks onto the other person and charges again. Unless you position each character really close to each other, you should only be able to sap the shield wasp when he targets Cody, but May can pull the trigger on him no matter who he's angry at. Keep up the dodges and blasts until he's popped. Walking a bit more and we find the hive we need to infiltrate, and a little bit more leads us to these buggers, a whole bunch of larvae. Even if their numbers are much greater than the wasps, they move really slowly and are practically frozen in place under a glob's worth of sap. Just don't try and rush through them. They will explode violently and not in the way you want. We also learn here that our explosions do AoE damage, so wait for the larvae in the back to walk up to their muddling mates and explode them all for some nice frags. Oops, Valorant terms. By the way, you should check out my Twitch, link is in the description. After escaping the larvae nursery, it's not too long until we meet the Mortar Wasp, who's taken our approach on attacking and shooting various bug balls at us. Unfortunately, this wasp doesn't seem to attack in a certain order, so you can let May die and focus on sapping him up with Cody. Then do the same thing and kill off Cody so you can blast him with May. Yay, equality! And yes, I tried to hide a character behind the terrain, but alas, the bug balls transcend reality and phase right through them. We keep up the sacrifices and the Mortar Wasp will be no more. By the way, if you're enjoying this challenge, please consider leaving a like, a sub, and ring that notification bell to keep updated on my next episodes. It seems like this whole tree is about war, because we're thrusted right into a new form of fighting against a horde of wasps. Their main form of attack is transforming themselves into inanimate objects and slamming down on us, kind of like those sardines in Finding Nemo. 10 out of 10 movie, by the way. They provide a much bigger hurt box for Cody to spray at and May to shoot at, but with two of these swarms attacking you at once, expect to die a lot. But once you've blown up enough bugs, they rage as hard as that most peaceful COD player and break the ground. Cody and May fall and end up sliding down a really big tunnel with the wasps setting up walls to stop them in their tracks. These wasps are particularly frail and will go down even if the smallest morsel of sap gets popped, but the window between sapping and firing is really small. I suggest keeping May's mouse close to Cody's controller so you can transition between the two faster. You also don't need to worry about where Cody and May move, there isn't any chance of them falling off the track. Once you blow up the final swarm, you arrive at the river, where you need to hitch a boat ride to the next destination. Ever so luckily, Cody reduces Jaw to a simple boat motor, so all he needs is one hand to move the boat in any direction. You can use the other hand to hold onto the mouse and get ready to fire with May. The beginning of the boating has no issues except for these larvae floating in the water. You'll get hurt if you hit them, so shoot with May to explode them before they get the chance. We also find out that hitting walls will indeed damage your boat, but there aren't too many tight spaces for this to matter too much. Just be a good gamer and keep boating your way through. That is, until you reach reach this section. The wasps find your boat and conjure a hurricane to tear apart the boat. May can't shoot the wasps in the hurricane, so it's all up to Cody to steer them clear. The floating larvae will still appear, so keep your hand on the mouse just in case. Once you've cleared the tornadoes, you've finished the boat section. And honestly, that was one of the most chillest double wielding this challenge has seen so far. It's just unfortunate that there isn't another situation like this later on. Some jellyfish parkour and mayfly launching later, we make it to this platform. As we raise up, lots of wasps charge at us from the side. Guppy doesn't do much, so keep Cody and May together and run around to keep them safe. If you're a real pro, you can split both of them apart to look like you're truly controlling two different characters. The platform finishes rising, and a small wasp fighting section that isn't too difficult from the others. We rise up into a coliseum where we're forced to fight this big beetle. This battle will take you some time. The beetle's two methods of attacking are stomping shockwaves and charging at you. The shockwaves are really big and cover the entire arena, so be mindful of this and jump over it. There are times later on in the fight where he stomps three times, so I suggest only jumping once for each wave. The double jump will skew the rhythm. When the beetle charges at you, it's fairly easy to dodge out of the way, but he follows this up with a stomp, so make sure to jump over it. While you can't attack his shell, you can stick sap in the grates in the ground, then when he charges over them, shoot the sap and blow up his bottom. It may take a couple tries and a long endurance battle, but keep it up and you'll knock him down soon enough. He tells Cody and May that he's not really on the wasp's side, but actually a mercenary willing to do work for anyone who pays him food. Luckily, he's a vegetarian, so Cody and May coax him with the queen's wasp's nectar that they don't even know exists, and brings him onto their side. Once you jump on his back, he gets so food driven that he charges off, sending us into yet another run and gun. Luckily, controlling the beetle is very much like the boat. Use one hand to control Cody's steering and jumping, and use the other to shoot down any air bombers with May. While the beetle is very fast, just keep your attention everywhere, and you'll break into the hive without a sweat. However, not all will make it out alive, as the beetle that so valiantly brought us here fell to the abyss below. So sorry, hero. You shall be missed. 
But Cody and May don't have time to reminisce because we immediately have an audience with the Wasp Queen. She doesn't like us revealing her secret that she's a robot, so she sends her wasp minions to kill us. The minions attack us like how the swarms did before, but with extra attacks, you basically need to sacrifice a person every other attack. But before they go down, try your best to spray sap on the wasps and blow them up. They're a lot stronger than the other swarms, so you need to get a good lathering on them. If you defeat a weapon swarm and there are still people to attack, one of the shield swarms will turn into a weapon swarm, leaving the wasp queen more vulnerable and exposing her weak points. There are four marks you need to blow up, the first two being right in front of you. When the wasps are recovering, spray your sap and blow it up. The sap will stick indefinitely, so even if May dies, you don't need to worry about the sap disappearing. After destroying the first two, she'll launch airstrikes on the battlefield and send rippling shockwaves throughout. Keep Cody and May together as you jump in tandem. And this is when you see the last two marks on her back. Unfortunately, just like the first two marks, you'll need to get rid of the wasps first, or else they'll guard her back. You could send both Cody and May back there so that when the wasps shield the back, you can blow them up, but Cody and May travel along the rails really fast, and even if you won't take any damage while grinding, I suggest destroying two wasp swarms on the battlefield first, then sending one of the characters down the ground ramp. The other character will attract the attention of the other two swarms, so it's easier for you to do whatever business you need to do behind the wasp queen's back. If you're concerned about people dying on the battlefield, keep them apart as far as you can. With this, you can focus on dodging separately or even leaving one character to perish. But once you've destroyed the last two marks on the back, the wasp queen rages and breaks the ground, leaving Cody and May with only the grind rail to ride on. The last thing you need to attack is the queen's chain. And while the wasps don't regenerate often, their new form of attacking is blocking the path. You can see them from a long ways away, but I suggest jumping over them, especially since it's very easy for Cody and May to separate. I've never tried blowing these wasps up, but jumping should be enough. While you can jump and get back on the grind rail, if you get knocked off by the wasp walls, you will need to tether back onto the grind rail. But just in case, tether every time you're airborne. But after multitasking between staying alive and blowing everything else up, you'll down the wasp queen in no time. After sabotaging the robot, you'll find the inside lies a bee. Not a queen bee, but just a bumblebee. Taking pity on the traitor upholding the entire operation, they save the bumblebee and blow up the hive, sending them back into the squirrel's den. Unfortunately, the squirrels think we're protecting the bumblebee so that they now become our enemies and open fire on us. With little choice, all because a bumblebee flies away, leaving their saviors alone, we man the airplane we saw earlier and learn our pilot's license on the fly. May takes control of the Gatling gun on top of the plane while Cody flies the actual airplane down a really small tunnel. But unlike the boat, crashing the airplane on a wall leads to much worse circumstances. But worst of all, May's turret uses regular aiming while Cody uses airplane control. I sure hope no more airplanes are needed after this. While the game decides to mess us over, at least they only make Cody in charge of steering, so use one hand to pilot the aircraft while the other hand controls May's shooting. The first part is just getting used to flying the plane, but not long after, these guys show up. The squirrels take flight and try to gun us down. It doesn't take too many shots to shoot down the plane, so spray them down with May as quickly as you can so you can get back to flying with Cody. Other turrets also appear and try to shoot down the plane, but they barely hit your airplane and they go down with a couple of hits. However, this does mean you'll need May to shoot targets that are both in front and behind the airplane, so make a big space on your desk and sweep the mouse left and right, one side for the front and the other for the back. Maneuvering the plane and shooting down the enemies aren't all that difficult, but boy, did I not expect the upcoming part. I'll just let Toad tell you the situation. I'm playing Street Fighter on the airplane. I'll try to <laughs> Yep, we obviously haven't played Street Fighter in It Takes Two, so use the first couple tries fighting him to get familiar with the controls. Dodging is more important than dealing damage, so keep one hand on the keyboard to jump and move with May, while the other hand switches between May's attacking and Cody's steering. The Squirrel General's AI is fairly limited, but there are a couple of attacks you need to worry about. When you're close ranged with him, he'll attempt some tail sweeps and a grapple, so attack a bit, then jump and move away. When you're farther away, he'll charge at you, so jump over him. Don't jump in place, because he will attack once his dash ends. Sometimes he'll shoot an acorn blast, easily telegraphed by him shouting out the attack name and him holding a burning Hadouken pose. You don't have a double jump, so wait a bit when you hear his shout to avoid jumping on top of the acorn. And finally, he does two strong punches in front of him, shown by his hands raging with fire. Jump behind him and use his cooldown to deal out some damage. But all of this knowledge is only applicable if you can steer Cody in the right direction. 
and that in and of itself is a big challenge. The only thing Cody can see is the peripherals around May's fight, and with his airplane controls I couldn't manage to fly by. I got pretty far, but I could never defeat the Squirrel General before Cody crashed the airplane. But if I focus on Cody, then May would die on top, and defeating the Squirrel General is the last requirement to get out of the airplane section. Was this really the end? I suffered through wasp swarms, grind rail sections, and the entire wasp queen fight, all without even knowing how to properly say wasp and I died just because I can't defeat the Squirrel General in time? No way was this the end, but the straits seemed dire. My attempts after attempts were fruitless, and I wasn't split brain enough to focus on both tasks at the same time. But I guess what you get for attempting a co-op game solo. And so, I had to pull out the worst, most dishonorable trick in my arsenal, hoping to scrape by and continue the challenge. Don't look. It's shameful. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Turning off airplane control. And it helps so much. Oh my gosh. I only needed two attempts and I RKO'd that squirrel into the airplane. Like, seriously, it was so much easier with the airplane controls. But if you're more comfortable that way, you do you. After that, all that's left is the gliding section, infinitesimal in difficulty compared to what we just witnessed. And we sailed on into Rose's bedroom. With not just one, but two whole species wiped out of our tree, we end the second episode of this challenge. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate your interest in this video to watch all the way to the end. Please consider dropping a like sub and following my twitch to join the gamer parson posse don't forget to check out these youtube channels as well they make great challenge videos and inspired this challenge until next time peeps have a good day night etc